himself seated in it. Looking through the breath, he sees a carriage, self propelled, coming to him. A door opens for the man, and out steps from this door the speaker, dressed in all clothes, wearing a invalid cape. I came into the place where she was, I ignored her. I showed no recognition of her, but began to speak on the power, being full of power. And she knows she said, what is it there? But it is not. It is narrow, and it is dark. And she just called me feeding this. Then I came to the end, I still did not recognize her. I paid no attention to her. Just keep proclaiming power. Then she said, as though by appointment the carriage came into view once more, I turned and repainted this carriage and sat holding back. It was sheer power. When I was sent to do the work I am doing, it was power to command. I was first embraced by infinite love. And I fused with it. While I'm one with love, I expect the risen Lord. I was taken before a being who was even full of power. Now you might think that can I be? No, God plays all the power. God is a potent being. Like Proteus, the legendary sea god, in the service of Neptune. He can assume any shape, any form, any body in the service of the one who sent him. So infinite power is the same thing who is infinite power. And we are told in Scripture that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So we will see him speaking only of power. And the infinite power, he knew who I was. I will tell him from now to the beginning, from now to the end of time, I could not persuade her. She would not have to have it shown to her by the only thing that was showing her. And that is God. For God speaks to men through the medium of dream, but He reveals Himself through the medium of faith, as told us in the 12th chapter of the book of Numbers. But had she not the vision herself, I could go from now to one time, but I could not be persuaded of of the truth of what I'm talking about. Then, another thing, if I came upon a sea, there was an enormous sea every type of person was present, all different nationalities, and strangely enough, they are very few. It is a child wherein they were born, and you are simply standing, not on this wall, you are standing on the beach, but you are black, or the things would have gone your wall, a huge lake, but you saw no shore, a very old child in a white room, and you are speaking to the entire time. I knew you were heaven, and yet, at the same time, I knew you were deep. And there was no uncertainty in my mind. I knew the devil, and I also know I was deep. Now that's the insane thing. If I know this phrase, everyone in this world is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one Lord. You do not lose your identity. You remain what you are, your John, your Mary, your Peter. You remain the individualized being that you are, and yet you are evil. Yet you are God. And everyone is destined to move towards the fulfillment of that which was in the beginning of the earth, to be all God. There's no room in eternity for two gods. No room in eternity for another. But you and I separate from God, the God, in the sense only of losing memory as to who you really are. That's a separation. If this very moment I cannot remember who I am, I am not going to be saved, but I certainly get separated from the being that I knew myself to be. So when I say that we are separated from God, I mean it in that sense. So separation from God 
every one I see is my very self push out. There is no one. Until the spring happens in May. But when it happens in May, he doesn't go and shout at the house of He tells us to an angel of service. I think that all circles still only a very few will ever really know. Those who have the experience meeting him in an entirely different world. For this drama is not safe. This drama of scripture is a supernatural drama. There is no secular history in scripture. The whole thing unfolds with me, the death of the soul of man. And everyone is dead who has this experience. So when the question is asked, who am I? You can ask it of anyone, say like a Peter. But Peter has a revelation not from a book, not from reason. He didn't sit down to rationalize the faith. It was unveiled. Some were in it, but the voice saying flesh and blood were not filled with it. But my Father, who is in heaven, and heaven is with him, has revealed it. He's unveiled in a way that you saw the truth of what you now declare. I accept your confession. But now then that we reinterpret this concept that man holds concerning the Father. It's a false concept. They expect him to come from without. And he never comes from without. He comes from within. And it comes so suddenly that no one is prepared for it. It comes from the truth as you're told in Scripture, just like a thief of the night. When he comes, no one expects it. I know in my own case, these small major things in my life were certainly not expected. The first one I was a city. And that was the first for God. So we see, as we're told in Scripture, unless you are born from the Lord, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. There is a must, but I have no concept in that part of the world, that that word was literally true. I thought that was going to be a big speech. That I, a big man, grown man, the father of children, and that I must be born again. What I asked in that dignity was how could this be possible? How could I, a man, a mature man, once walk into my mother's room and be born? When, at the time that I was be born, back in the city, my mother was gone from this world. So how could it be? I didn't realize. In that day, which was 1959, that that drama was literally true until within me the whole thing began to unfold. When my whole head became the most intense vibration, and I found myself in sleep, waiting on a long, long sleep, and when I wake, I woke within myself. I saw the tomb, and it sealed. And then I came on it like a child coming out of the womb of a woman. And then the entire song of scripture confronted me. They are the me that told us in the third chapter of the book of John. When he tells Nicodemus, you must be born again. And that word, translated again, is the Greek word, aloke, which means from above, that is from God. Literally from above. Not from the womb of woman below, but from the womb of God above, which is the son of man. That's where the real man began to dream this strange, peculiar dream of life. And that's where men were awake. And out of that room, men will come. So you awake. And awakening is a resurrection. You wake from the long, long sleep. It was so profound. It seemed like the sleep of death. For you are in a tomb, and you know it's a tomb, yet you know it's a star. And how will you come? And then you'll leave the peculiar, unrealistic dream, and you feel it, you hear it. And your attention is diverted from that body on a which you've just emerged. You will only divert it from that second, and when you look back, the body is gone. In fulfillment of scripture, where else have they taken his body? The body is gone. But in its place, you will find it three names. You find names for my three older brothers. And there they were, where the body, formerly, and just like that, a few seconds ago, lay. They are two disturbed by the deed. And one who was not to come from this world, he wrote, and suddenly knows what he thought was the cause of the service over that case. He may not know the fact. 
himself. And God has taken his place in the divine house. In the midst of the gods, he holds up. And I say he has done.
someone with the strength and power of a free speaker or not. But he said, I'd love to go home first of all and tell my name with where I am. Because when you think about it, there's nothing waiting. Or if you come with me, it will come back. But she did. I'm in a strange home with a strange person in a strange atmosphere. And here I am, in the wee hours of the morning, and I feel this peculiar breeze and vibration in my head. It increases in intensity. But it reaches the apex of the chemistry that suddenly they are started by two brothers I haven't seen in over 40 years. And my land over. My oldest brother said, but she is too old to have a baby. Well, they agree. But he still picks up the infant wrapped in swallowing clothes and puts it in his sister's own. Now this lady is 77 years old. A retired school teacher of Eric. It comes in her case and it comes to Sarah. Too old to have a child. But this is not a physical child. This is a supernatural experience. So he heard the word, she heard the word, but she is too old to have a child. When the infant was raised from the floor and put into her head. After that, she found herself in the chamber where she lives. Unlike my experience, she's in the chamber. The rough side of the chamber. And here comes this blonde blue eyed man. And she said, I did not have to ask you who the son of you, my man. I knew he was my son, and I knew he was daily of the middle place. She said, Every experience must be done. That takes nine months and two years after the third night of one. She was happy because she had the first three. And so, a man in difference in this world. For the woman. She takes the pattern of Sarah and he takes the pattern of Abraham. But the identical picture has related in Scripture. So you dwell upon it tonight, even though you cannot completely accept it, you dwell upon it. Who am I? If you tell the truth, you never know what he's talking about. And you really have these experiences. And see if you cannot get from within yourself an answer to the truth of what I'm talking about. I tell you, the answer will come. In some strange way, God will end, for God is not being a follower. God is within. He is never so far off as even to be near, for nearness implies separation. God cannot even be near. Why? Because his name, he gave to me. What's his name? But if I can eat things, then he would eat. But you can't say, I am his name. It's the core, it's the root, it's the very center of your being. My name is there, my head is there, my friends are there. But I can't say, I am, and entertain the word name. And I am is the name of God forever. That I am is his name forever. Well, then he cannot be far off. In fact, he cannot be even so far off as to be made For many implies separation. That's who you really are. And that thing, which is I am, that's God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. When he asks, who do you say I am? And he came, you are. He could have said, you are the power of God. Or the word Christ defined in Corinthians as the power of God and the wisdom of God. One day, you will have experience. And you will see someone who has made this claim without boasting. And you will come upon a scene. And the scene will unveil itself before you. And you'll know her claim or his claim is a true claim. Or you'll know him to be Jesus. Or know her to be Jesus. And you still will not see that it is not the thing you know. No loss of identity. And yet Jesus. And you come back to your waking state here. And there is no uncertainty in your mind as to what and who did God will in you. God avails himself of it. Now let us just before I get promised to God with the key in the back of this system. I hope so. And I want to train you for But I do hope you've heard 
love us, that we're all part of that one body. That one body fell. That one body derived. Then you will all of his own good time into the new living temple. Well, I don't care what folks come out. Many of us think they got something that's pretty, but it's true. But nothing to be more close to that. Morning paper, that comes out. That's pretty, pretty true. Not even violence. I am not listening. I have a scheme I want to put over, and so I get behind with my translations. And they write all the lines in the world that the paper prints it, and you read it. But it goes to the of the paper, but it must be true. But not to be further from the truth. But because the magic creates reality, it will prove itself in performance. And no one else. There's nothing but God. You do not. At death day, after resurrection, you do not find yourself restored to life. No one but the body of God. There are times everyone. Or one part of God will be lost, and that is impossible. Okay? It is not your father's will that one will be lost.
find in the absence of all evidence to the contrary, you will consider I will do what? Well, you will use the power of God. Right now, right it does use the power of God. There's only God's power. But you can speak of a devil, what devil? Listen to the word of the scripture. You do not. I came, and I make a lot. I move, and I live. And I raise my hand forever in God, and I live forever. There is no God beside The same one that kills is the one that makes a lie. The one that blesses is the one that blesses. But man is the offer of no one. And he has no faith. God can kill man, but man can become God. But I am is not you. I am is just, you can say I was God. I am the Lord. It's not past and future, it's just I am. We're well, given the power now. Any other prayer? Chapter of First Samuel, as a long 
praise the Father, then we praise the Father, then we So praise the Father, and that's God. And I say, Father, and that's God. Look at each other, and I can't see how we come out of the same parents. And we don't come out beyond the parents. So what he calls the truth into the eyes of God. 